1.74 trillion. That's how much roughly 43 million Americans owe in student debt. To put that into perspective, 1.74 trillion would make you the 12th largest economy in the world, ahead of countries like South Korea, Australia, Spain, and the Netherlands. Divided evenly amongst borrowers, that would be about $39,535 per person. To make matters worse, colleges are showing no sign of slowing down, with some of them costing upwards of seventy dollars to $80,000 a year to attend, more than most graduates will make annually. But it wasn't always like this. Let's go. For 2022 to 2023, the average public four-year in-state college total yearly cost was $27,940, so $111,760 in total. For a public four-year out-of-state college, that number jumps considerably to $45,240 a year, or $180,960 in total. Then we get to private schools where the average year cost is $57,570 or $230,280 when you graduate. It's no secret that prices are continuing to go up and have been for a while now. What's more, millions of Americans are struggling to pay off what they thought would help them achieve a brighter, more lucrative future. At times in their lives when they should be settling down, getting married, buying a home, a car, or even having kids, people are forced to wait because these life-changing events would just add further financial stress to their lives. To hear some of these accounts, head on over to studentdebtcrisis.org to see how average Americans like you and me are being affected. So how do we prevent future generations from having to deal with these financial stresses? Well, probably the biggest factor there is is determining whether or not you actually need to go to college. There are many jobs out there that don't require a college degree that you can start doing from day one or after going to vocational school. A mechanic, an electrician, a plumber, an air traffic controller. All of these jobs are excellent jobs that pay very well, and you can go about your life not having to deal with student debt. But let's say you decide that college is necessary, but you don't know what you want to pursue. That's perfectly normal. It's very hard to make a decision at 17 or 18 years old that might affect you for the rest of your life. So go to college that first year, take some electives, try different subjects, and see which subject speaks to you. But while you're doing this, it might make more sense to go to a community college or an in-state public college to save some money while you do your soul searching. And once you decide what subject you want to pursue, you can either continue to pursue it at the current school you're at or transfer to another school where they might have a more prestigious program for that specific subject. However, regardless of where you end up going to college, if you do decide to go to college, take the time to look at scholarships or grants because you'd be surprised how many different organizations want to just throw money at students for the most randomest things. Are you a lefty? Are you a first generation citizen? You speak 12 languages, right? Are you Russian? Are you from Indonesia? All these different things, organizations want to help these people. So take the time and you can actually get some serious money by either just entering to win or just writing a couple page paper. Another thing to consider is getting a job while on campus. Now, most colleges actually hire current students to be lab assistants, receptionists, and even work in the dining hall. This is a great way to earn some extra money and you might make some good connections along the way. Probably the most lucrative job on campus is being an RA or a residential advisor, where it's your job to manage a floor full of students and make sure everything is going as smooth as possible. It is pretty common for RAs to get a combination of the following. Their room and board covered, free meals at the dining hall, tuition stipends, a room to yourself, sometimes with a bathroom, and even a weekly salary. This can save you tens of thousands of dollars and it's also something you can put on your resume. You can also consider commuting to college. While some people want to get that full college experience, others don't and would rather save the money and live at home. A more long-term solution is opening a 529 college savings account, which is an investment account used for qualified educational expenses. Withdrawals are tax-free and you can open one in any state regardless of where you live or where the beneficiary decides to go to school. As long as you are 18 years old, you can open a plan. Just remember that the beneficiary has to have a tax ID or a social security number and that there can only be one beneficiary at a time. Not everybody needs to go to college to be successful, but if you do end up going to college, please be serious. Tens of thousands of dollars in student debt with interest rates of five and five and a half percent may not seem like a big deal to you at 17 or 18 years old, but it can seriously hurt you and follow you around for decades. So with that, good luck. I'm Evan and thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, then click on the video here. Also, if you haven't, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos.